Well, hey, everybody, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here with me tonight, whether you're watching here in the United States or you're watching over in New Zealand, Australia, all over Europe, the UK, Canada, South America, South Africa, wherever you are. I'm so glad that you're here and uh, you're a part of this army of artists that God's raising up. Welcome tonight to this Sunday night edition of, uh, of Live with Matt. I'm super glad to be here. I'm going to be sharing tonight some really key things, I think, that are going to be really important for you on how God wants to use both your life and your art uh, in this generation, in this season right now, in the middle of COVID, in the middle of craziness, <laughs> all of that sort of thing. We're going to be talking about all of it tonight, uh, even leaving a, a few minutes at the end to answer a few questions for you if you've got those. So um, be sure to hang on till the end. So Welcome. I see everybody. There's Carrie and there's Cherie and there's Melody and folks are coming on. There's JM. There's uh, there's D. Lots and lots of people coming on tonight. So really glad you're here. Listen, be sure if this is your first time uh, being on with me, be sure to let me know uh, that this is your first time. I love to say hello to newbies and, uh, and new folks that are here on live with me. Also, introduce yourself in terms of where you're from and what you do creatively, all right? Because that's a great opportunity to meet other people that are on the same journey as you and uh, connect with others in your area. Uh, there's Aaron, there's B, there's Roberta, there's Susan. B said she's from Chicago. B, listen, my little sister has the best French pastry shop in Chicago called Southern France. You need to go see her. So who else? There's Joanne from Victoria, Australia. Morning, Joanne. There's Gabriel out in California. Gosh, people from all over. Elizabeth. Uh, let's see. Yeah, she's new from Colorado. So really glad you're here. Welcome tonight. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Lots of uh, lots of great things. There's Ruby. There's uh, who else? Oh, there's Henry from South Florida. Hey, Henry, welcome. There's a, uh, gosh, they're going by so fast, I can't even see them all. <laughs> but anyway, really glad you're here, and uh, it's going to be a, a great, great time tonight. All right? I don't know where you are. Uh, grab you something warm to drink. I'll always like to have something warm to drink with me. And we're going to settle in tonight uh, to have a really, really great time. Of course, Cherie is on, who's our uh, community manager. And so if you've got any questions that um, – I don't get to technically or whatever. Um, Cherie can help point you in the right direction of any links that I share or things like that tonight, and um, we'll get you we'll get you hooked up. All right. Well, guys, listen. I wanted to take tonight to talk about um, just this whole fact that God wants to use you and me in our life and in our art in really, really powerful ways, even in the middle um, of this crazy pandemic and all this crazy stuff that's going on all over the world. I know that, you know, if you're like me and you go on Facebook right now uh, or Instagram, probably two thirds of your feed is like conspiracy theory, <laughs> crazy fear mongering, all this kind of stuff. And then uh, some art, which I'm like, give me more art and less of the other stuff. And uh, all this stuff and all these theories of what's going on and why it's happening, all this kind of stuff. And so I just wanted to let you know, I don't know if you realize this, but, you know, we have a choice, right? As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. That's what Proverbs 27, 3 says. And, you know, we have a choice to look at the world in a certain way. And I made a choice a long time ago, and I love I've been helping artists do this for a long time in the mentoring program and everything we do. You have a choice to either have a kingdom centric view of the world and of what's going on or a self centric view. All right. A problem centric view. I was with somebody a couple of weeks ago and I was like, God bless America. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> this person, I don't care if you said the sky was blue, they would be they would be upset that it wasn't the right shade of blue. I mean, it was just like everything was just, you know, nothing was ever right. Well, guess what? That's a choice. You can see it like that. And for so many people right now in the middle of COVID, in the middle of um, in the middle of all the fear and anxiety and uh, trouble that's going on, the riots and the you know, shut down and not shut down and is COVID going and can we meet at church and can we not? And I don't know what I'm doing. What's my business doing? All my shows have been canceled and how do I do something online? Listen, in the middle of that, 
there's a few really important things to realize. Number one, God was not surprised. God is still in control. He's still on the throne, right? And there's still incredible things for you in this season right now. If, 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 listen, if you're positioned to receive them and if you're positioned to walk in them, all right? And so I just want to let you know, you know, this season right now has, I know, been scary for a lot of people, been unnerving for a lot of people. I mean, be honest, like, right, we're, we're kind of family on, on these, you know, you know, when we when I do these Facebook lives. So let's just be honest. If this season, these last four or five months have been really unnerving, unsettling, got you like kind of freaked out a little bit, just just be honest. Say, yeah, that's that's me. I know it. I mean, people, we go through that. All right. It's, everything is not roses right now. There's some, there's difficulty, there's tribulation, but here's the beautiful thing for those of us who are intentionally cultivating our mindset with a kingdom focus, pressing into the Lord, when the fear comes, pressing into the Lord, when temptation comes, even when we slip up and we go back to our old ways, we get back up, dust ourselves off and get back uh, on guess what? There are some incredible things that are happening right now. I was going to tell you a, a few stories. I just was like, who can I tell them about? Because there've been so many incredible stories coming out of our our Created to Thrive Artist Mentoring Program. We've got about thirteen hundred artists that are a part of that right now, plus a number of artists in my Mastery Program as well. I think of Renee the other day, who is an artist in East Tennessee. Uh, Renee is an incredible artist, but she's used to doing art shows, galleries, things like that. Well, guess what? It's all shut down. Well, one of the things we've been teaching a lot about in the mentoring program was doing online uh, galleries, in-home sales, that sort of thing. So guess what she did? <laughs> she just decided she was going to do it. Now, she didn't have any fancy, she didn't have any fancy uh, equipment and that sort of thing. She literally grabbed, she grabbed her cell phone and uh, she grabbed some other things that you know, uh, some easels that she had, that sort of stuff. She set all of her artwork out on her deck. I mean, we're talking low tech, all right? She went in and she started walking people through, you know, did a Facebook group, invited people to get into a private Facebook group for the show. And she walked through and told people about the art and that sort of thing. And, you know, was showing them up close and all this kind of stuff. Again, on her cell phone, all right? Guess what? Sold 15 paintings. Bam! <laughs> and everybody's like, what? That was incredible. But guess what? In the middle of all this craziness, she wasn't afraid to step out. She had a plan. We're going to be talking about that tonight. She had a plan. She had a vision. She knew where she was going and she stepped out and God met her there with incredible, uh, incredible breakthrough in that. That's absolutely possible. If God did it for Renee, if he led her in that, he can, he can do the same for you. I think of Sharon. All right. Sharon's a, a, an artist out in Western Canada. Beautiful artist. I mean, beautiful work. And I've been teaching a long time. But again, shows are closed down. In-person classes shut down, that sort of thing. So guess what? We've been talking a lot in the mentoring lately. I've been teaching modules about how to do online classes. How do you set them up? How do you launch them? How do you sell them? How do you get people interested in them? All the different things. We go through all of that. Well, Sharon took that to heart. She said, yeah, this is my time to do that. And so guess what? She got on live Q&A with me. We do that every week in the mentoring program. We're on there and she's asking questions and I'm answering them. Well, after a few weeks, I think maybe, I don't know, a couple of months she was working on it. She said, Matt, I got my course ready. And everybody's like, all right, this is great. Now, here was the cool thing. She'd never done an online course before. All right. Never filmed anything like that. Never written a curriculum for, <laughs> for that. Nothing. All right. She put that course out. She did everything we had talked about and everything. She got out there, and started doing it. Guess what? In a week, she got 55 people to buy her first course at $120 each. That was, now I'm going to do the math for you real quick because let's just see right here on our little handy dandy calculator. A um, hundred and where's, where's my calculator? 120 times 55, what? $6,600 in a week from an online class that she had never done before. Now, if you don't think that's amazing, I don't know where you've been, but that is pretty 
amazing. <laughs> that is pretty doggone amazing. And everybody, she came back and told everybody in the mentoring program, it was like, yeah, so awesome, you know. But again, what did she do? She said, yes. She said, yes, in the middle of pandemic and freaking out and all this kind of stuff. And God spoke to her. She used, you know, the tools that, that I'd given her in the mentoring program. She asked questions. She was in the, on mastermind calls, doing all the different things that we do. And she got the support she needed and boom, she had an incredible, incredible show or incredible class that came through. Now she's learning. She's learning. She's, she's already said, Matt, there's some things I would have done differently. Some things I learned next time, but gosh, I love it. Here's Cindy right here. Look at this. Cindy Reed, people are messaging me on Facebook for commissions ever since Created to Thrive. That's our mentoring program. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, listen, I, I, I was going to tell you uh, one more. Uh, my friend Jane, all right, Jane Frost, she's in my mastery program, which is an advanced level uh, mentoring program for a much smaller group of people. Jane's in the UK. Now, she's close to my heart because she's a natural fiber artist as well, does baskets, does weaving, does sculpture, does all kind of stuff. But in the middle of, you know, where she lives, they have been in like lockdown. All right. Couldn't do anything. Well, of course, you know, artists, we like to bend the rules and that sort of thing. So she started making art and hanging it, literally hanging it out the window. She started making bad sculpture. And hanging it out the window. And I'm talking like from the second or I think it's the second, it may be the third story, but I think it's the second story of her house. She's letting these baskets and all these crazy sculptures that just kind of hang all the way down to the ground. Well, guess what? People walking by for exercise and people, guess what? They they started looking and started noticing and that sort of thing. And we're like, what's that? All the, guess what? She got a call the other day from a local, I believe it was a museum. They want her to do an installation of that piece coming up very soon. And it, everybody was like, are you kidding me? I mean, this is incredible. She also walked across the um, the street to the little uh, garden area that's in her in her village and worked with them and created a labyrinth for them to be able to, she cut it literally in the grass, all right, for people to uh, to walk on and to use for meditation and just for being outside and the children are using it to play because they can't get on the equipment and all this. I mean, just these incredible, incredible stories of God doing incredible things in the lives of artists who are willing to do what? To say yes, <laughs> to trust him and to step out in the middle of an uncertain uh, situation. I, I love that. I love that. Now, listen, I don't know if you've ever thought about this or not, but you and I, especially as creatives, we were made and you were made for the marketplace. Your gifting, all right, and my gifting creatively is meant for the marketplace. It can bless the church, sure. Should we be doing art in worship? Absolutely. Should we have art in church? Absolutely. Creative expression in as a part of worship? Absolutely. Great. But listen, we were made for the marketplace. Why? Because we're image bearers. We're the ones who release the light and life of God through our life and through our art. That's what God's designed us to do. And so when we're stove up in the church, when we're just hidden away over here in the church or we're hidden away over here in our studios, or we're hidden away because of the pandemic, or because of fear, because of lack of business understanding, or because of nervousness, because I'm an introvert, or I'm an extrovert, or whatever it is, we lose, or rather we forfeit, the opportunity that God has given us to make an impact with our life in the marketplace. Listen, I don't know if you've read the New Testament a lot, but if you look at where Jesus spent most of his time and the disciples spent most of their time, where was it? In the marketplace. Why? Because that's where the people are. That's where people need to interact with you, to sense your love and care for them, to develop relationships with people, for your work, to be able to speak and to, to be used by God to do incredible things. We were made for the marketplace. Now, I want you to be honest tonight. All right. We're just, we're getting honest. <laughs> I want you to be honest with me. All right. If, if that 
makes you a little nervous. This whole idea of the concept of being in the marketplace, selling your work, being in business for yourself. Maybe you've never done anything like that before, or maybe you did it and it was like, a, oh, I didn't have such a great experience or I did it, but I didn't really know what I was doing or I'm doing it and I don't really know what, <laughs> what I'm doing, but I'm trying my, my best. If, if that makes you a little nervous, this whole calling of, of being made for the marketplace, just, just lift your hand, brother. <laughs> lift your hands and just say, yeah, that's me on there. All right. Because, there's absolutely a nervousness that can come inside of people. And, and here's the thing. I find typically that the main reason people get nervous about this whole idea of being made for the marketplace is because they just don't have any experience with it. I mean, it would be like me, honestly, if somebody said, okay, Matt, today, you know, God's design for your life is to be an air conditioner repairman, and it's going to be awesome. And uh, so all you got to do is show up at the air conditioning repair place and get your car and your toolbox, and we're going to send you out. Well, listen, I would be like freaked out because the only thing I know about an air conditioner is how to turn it on and off. <laughs> That is all I know. That's like cars. I don't know anything about cars except where to put the gas in and where to push the pedal and how loud to turn up the radio. I mean, that's all I know. But when it comes to the marketplace, it's been so beautiful. God's taught. I used to be really afraid of money, finances, business, all that kind of thing. God really has brought me so far in in really not that long a time. Uh, in my life, uh, in really growing as an entrepreneur and growing in business. But I find for most people that that nervousness, and I'm seeing so many people right here, is just because you don't have experience with it. And you don't maybe you don't know the ins and outs of it. Like if I were to go look at an air conditioner in a commercial building and they say, well, fix it, I, I wouldn't even know where to start. Some of you are like that, you know, with, with business and being in, mark, in in the marketplace. You're just like, I want to do it. I'm open to it. I, I mean, if God wants me to be out there, I'm totally ready, but I know, I don't even know what I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if you, I mean, if you like that, you don't even know what you don't know. You don't even know the questions to ask in order to find out what you need to know. I mean, I've been there. Trust me. Well, as I'm thinking about this tonight and just wanted to give you some nuggets, there are really seven kind of things, seven steps, if you will that you got to go through seven things that you really have to begin to develop some what I call masterful competence in, in order to begin to thrive as an artist in the marketplace. All right. Now I've actually put these together in um, a success blueprint um, that we're getting ready to share um, this Friday at our, at our jumpstart event, which is coming up uh, on Friday the 14th. But I wanted to, and I'm going to tell you about that tonight, definitely. But um, I wanted to show this to you because in this success blueprint that we put together, um, we've got, let's see, where is it? Right, yeah, right there. All right, page number three. There are seven things that you've got to get a hold of. That's a Southernism. <laughs> you got to get a hold of it. You've got to develop masterful competence in these areas over time in order to begin to thrive as an artist. What are they? Well, first, you got to have a God-given vision. All right. You got to have a God-given vision downloaded to you by the Holy Spirit. All right. Of what it is that you're called to do and where it is that you're going. That doesn't mean you got to know the how. That doesn't mean you got to know all the details, but you got to know that you know that you know. It's like when you got saved, you knew that the Holy Spirit was drawing you at that point, that there was a yes in your heart to go in this direction. That's what your big vision is. That's what your big vision is. Yes, this is what God's called me to do. I don't know all the details, but this is where I'm going. All right. Number two is your mindset. If your mindset, we talk about this so much in the mentoring program and all my books about the, the opportunity to renew your mind. Why? Because the battle for your life and the battleground through which and on which you are wrestling and, and struggling every day is rarely in the natural. It is almost 100% up here in your mind. It is thoughts 
and fears and anxiety and doubts and all that sort of thing about yourself, about God, about your art, about what's possible, about what you can do, about what's defined you in the past, all that stuff. So getting a hold of your mindset, that's one of my favorite things to teach. I mean, that's a core of everything that we do. That's a big, big deal though. All right, so your vision and then your mindset, that's two things. Number th- number three, three, <laughs> number three is your daily habits. All right, you can write these down. Number three is your daily habits because your habits, all right, create what is your life. Things you do over and over and over again, that becomes the fruit of your life. So I learned this a long time ago and I love to teach this to artists. If you don't, you know, the life that you're living right now is 100% the fruit of the thoughts that you've thought and, and cultivated and planted in your heart and the habits, the daily habits that you have employed in your life. Maybe a third one is the people that you've hung around. All right. Those three factors in your life and the habits that surround them absolutely create the life that you're living right now. Well, I don't like the life I'm living right now, or I believe God's got more for me. Well, then what are you willing to do to change it? What are you willing to do to change that? All right. So your habits, learning to to manage and control and cultivate habits that bring life are huge. All right. Are huge when it comes to understanding that you've been made for the marketplace, all right? And you've got a calling from God. So vision, your mindset, your habits. Can you see how this is starting? All of a sudden, God's giving you a vision. Then you're starting to think on that vision. Then you're starting to create lifestyle habits that support that vision. All of a sudden, there's some momentum starting to happen. And guess what? Your art is the next thing. Listen, if if you're going to thrive in the marketplace, you got to get beyond beginner level. You just do. No supernatural process is going to get you beyond that. All right. It takes you showing up in the studio every day. There's an acceleration that begins to happen by the grace of God when you give yourself to the artistic process of developing your unique voice and and developing an aesthetic and becoming comfortable and masterful in your use of techniques and materials and all that sort of thing, all of a sudden God's grace begins to bathe all of that and your art begins to develop. But that's a, that's a big, 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 one of the number seven, you know, one of the seven things that you've got to have a hold of. All right. Numbers, these next number six, seven, and eight, or number five, six, and seven, rather. I was like, please don't tell me I have eight, (laughs) seven. The number five, six, and seven is this, your personal brand. All right, now, how many of you know, and you may be like this, you can be the most talented artist in the world. All right, you can be the most talented artist in the world, but if you don't know how to attract buyers, how to create a brand that is attractive and that is communicative with the people who are buying, who want to buy your art, how to develop relationship with them over time, all right, how to cultivate that with them over time, how to present yourself and your work in a way that's unique and desirable. Listen, you can be the most talented artist in the world. You will not sell that much art. I know this, all right? I see artists like this all the time come into the mentoring program that are uber talented. You may be uber talented, all right? But you've not learned yet. Again, no shame. You just not learned yet, all right, how to um, build your personal brand yet and connect with people on Instagram, on Facebook, on social media, with strategic partnerships, uh, in galleries, in retail sales, in online sales, all of those sort of things. Learning to build that brand is really, really, really huge. Without that, it is almost impossible to build any kind of significant part-time or much less full-time um, art business, all right? Number number six is then the business part of this, all right? The business part is what? The vehicle, the vehicle that gets you out into the marketplace, all right? Having your business entity set up. Is your credit card processing set up? Can you take, uh, is your website set up? Can you take online transactions? Uh, are, are you easy to communicate with? Do you have an email address? I mean, all of the things, you know, that it takes to run 
a business? Are you paying your taxes? Do you have QuickBooks? Are you working with an accountant? I mean, all those things, all right? <laughs> that can in itself be just like rah, overwhelming, but you, unless you are working to develop mastery in that and control over that, you may be, again, uber talented. You may be uber connecting with people and really likable and that sort of thing. But if you've never set up your business, then you're not going to have much income coming into your bank account. I mean, because you may not even have set up a bank account yet. I mean, there's just some, again, basic things. And then the seventh thing, all right, and this is the seven big things. The seventh thing is this whole idea of having a plan to succeed. What are you doing in the next 90 days, in the next 30 days, to make progress in each of these areas, not overnight success, but but progress, all right? Incremental progress in each of these areas. What are you doing and how are you moving forward in each of those areas, all right? Without that plan to succeed, you know, having no plan is planning to fail. Why? Because you never know when you get there. You never know what you're going toward. You don't know how to manage your time. You get overwhelmed. You live your life in response to everything else everybody else wants you to do and not on the things that are important to you. All right. Now, here's the thing that I would say, you know, again, I've been an artist for, gosh, I mean, seriously, since I was 20 years old, I'll be 47 years old this year in September. All right. I keep saying I'm 47 this year, but I won't be 47 till September. I think I'm I'm having one of those moments, but <laughs> those moments they talk about. But um, I've been doing this a long time, 20, 26, 27 years. All right. Of, of being an artist, selling, teaching, um, started off a little bit, then part time, then full time, then uber full time, growing a very, very successful art business myself, personally selling hundreds of thousands of dollars of my own original art. Then in the last uh, four years, well, in the last 10 years, helping artists through all my books, but all in the last four years in our mentoring program, I have seen the stories of a lot of artists. Like I said, we got like almost 1,300 people in our mentoring program right now. I hear these stories every week. Almost everybody that comes into, uh, I'm going to take that down. Almost everybody that comes into the mentoring program, at first, they come in with, I know I got to be doing all this stuff. I know I've got to balance these seven areas, the vision and the mindset and my daily habits and my art and my brand and my business and my, my plan to succeed and that sort of thing. I know I've got to do that, but I simply get overwhelmed. Now, how many of you would say that that's where you are right now? You are like, I want to do this. Like, I believe that God has made me for the marketplace. I believe that there is impact to be made in my life and through my art in the marketplace. I know that that's who God has called me to, 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 to be and what he's called me to do. But when it comes to trying to manage and juggle these seven things and, and all the details that, that come into those, it's a lot. It's a lot. And I'm not going to lie to you. It is a lot. It is a lot. I think that's one of the most beautiful things I've seen in the mentoring program is that people are able to walk through that in community with each other so they don't feel alone. Walk, able, me able to help them, our leaders able to help them, that sort of thing. I mean, other people speaking into their journey. That's such a beautiful dynamic that it makes it much, 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 much more likely for people to succeed. But I get this question all the time from people. And maybe you are one of the people that sends these emails, you know, to me or, you know, people are emailing me all the time or people are private messages, you know, on uh, on Facebook or or Instagram and that sort of thing. And here's here's typically the way it goes. It's like, Matt, I love what you're doing. I know God's called me as an artist, that sort of thing. But I am so overwhelmed <laughs> with all the stuff that it takes to be an artist. But I know that God's called me to do it. Is there, is there one document? Is there one sheet? Is there one thing that you can give me that would be like a, like a roadmap to help me get started 
in the right direction because I don't even know where to start. I hear that all the time. Or the other thing is, man, I've been trying to do this myself for a long time. I'm having marginal kind of results. I'm hitting and missing. I'm doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that. I got no plan. Is there something you can do to help me get organized and get focused in what I'm doing as an artist? Because again, see, this is the key for me. And this, I think, I think, but if you're on this tonight or whenever you're watching this, this is the key for you. I'm not just doing this my life as an artist. I'm not just an artist because I want to make art and make money. I'm making art because I believe in the core of my being that the God of the universe created me with his creative DNA to release his light in life through my life and through the art that I create. And when I create art, it brings pleasure to God and it becomes a conduit of his nature in the earth that touches and transforms everything and every person that it comes in contact with. Now that, listen, that understanding, that understanding years ago came to a real um, sort of sobering moment for me where it was like, are you going to take this thing seriously or not? Are you going to, are you going to learn what you need to learn? <laughs> are you going to push through the fear? Are you going to ask questions where you need to ask questions? <laughs> are you going to put the time in and do this thing if you really believe that it's God that is giving you this gift and that is giving you this desire to be in the marketplace, sell your art, make an impact, do the thing that he's designed you to do? Are you willing to do it? Now, here's the, here's the, the thing that I found. Most artists say that they believe that, but many, I would say over 90%, 95% even of artists are not willing to do what you need to do to get started and to get rolling and to stay in process. All right. Now, for those that are, I love working with them. <laughs> I love working with you tonight because you're on here. You're like, I want to learn. I want to know what this is about. I love it. Why? Because I want to pour into the people that want to go to the next level. I want to pour into people who know that they're called by God and know that he's got incredible things for them. And even in the middle of fear and anxiety and frustration and all that sort of thing, they're like, yep, I'm willing to just do what you say. I'm willing to go. I love a Amy Smith, one of my dear friends who's in our mastery program. She's one of our small group leaders in the mentoring program. When she first came in the mentoring program four years ago, she said, Matt, I didn't even know if I believed what you were saying, <laughs> but I knew I liked you. I knew I trusted you. And she, and she said, I, would, I just determined in my heart, I was just going to do it because I, I had seen God do incredible things in your life. And I just said, I want the same thing that Matt's got. So I'm just going to do it. I love that. I love that. People just, that's like my friend Philip Ortiz. I've got a, there's a great video of him on our YouTube channel. And um, in fact, maybe Cherie can, can find that. But in the first few minutes of the, of the video in the, uh, when he's talking about his experience in the mentoring program, he said, when I saw Matt Tommy on Facebook, he said, I thought it was clickbait. He said, is this guy really for real? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Some, you may be saying that right now. Who is this guy? Is he for real? What is this? But at some point, you got to make a decision, right? You got to decide, is this thing that's on my heart, is this from the Lord or is it not? And if it is, then what am I willing to do in order to, to be the person that I need to be, learn the things I need to learn and press into this calling that God's given me? Because here's the truth. Growth in the kingdom does not happen automatically. Growth in the kingdom Growth in your finances, growth in your business, growth in your uh, your spiritual gifts, growth in your artistic. It happens just like it says in Matthew 25. What? You've been faithful with little. Now I'm going to make you ruler over much. Faithful with little, ruler over much. That's how you grow in the kingdom. And so you may be sitting there tonight and be going, and be going oh, Matt, I want to do it. I want to take the next step. What is the next step? All right. 
Well, listen, like I said, I get this question all the time. And for years, what we've said to people is join the mentoring program. All right. And we're going to be opening the doors. Y'all know, most of you know, we open the mentoring program twice a year, January and September. All right. And uh, we'll have hundreds of artists come in during that time. It's incredible. God moves in powerful ways. The stories of breakthrough are phenomenal. I mean, I can't even tell you. So, but it's our team, as we've been talking about, it's like, is there something in between? Is there something like, you know, cause we've got the experience course that we do in April and, but just opening in January and September, like, is there something that we could do to help people beyond just the podcast, but actually like walking through people, walking people through a process to get started as an artist, almost like a runway to the mentoring program. So listen, all this COVID stuff and that sort of thing, we've been thinking, we're just like, Lord, what is it? What could it be? What could I do in like a compressed time frame where people don't have to come spend a week or many, many days and all this kind of stuff? Maybe like one day, six hours, all right, to be able to walk through details about these seven things. Because as you know, I mean, I was just spouting things off tonight. There are a lot of details in each one of these, all right, that you have to understand and begin to develop a plan for in your life. So here's what we've done. I've developed something called Jumpstart, which is a one-day workshop. It's coming up on on uh, Friday, August the 14th. Now, we're live right now on Sunday night, all right? So that's going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and it happens on Friday, all right, the 14th, from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We did it at that kind of weird time so that just about anybody in the world can participate no matter where you are in the world because we're, we're a global uh, company. We work with people all over the world, all right, in, in our mentoring process, all right? Jumpstart is an opportunity for us to dive deep into this success blueprint through a whole nother document I've developed. It's a 26-page PDF called the Thriving Christian Artist Starter Kit. We go into detail. I teach you actually do do some work on the call and you come out at the end of the day with a clear, customized 30-day plan for you, not my plan, your plan, <laughs> for the next 30 days of what to do to start to make progress, to jumpstart, all right, wherever you are. If you're trying to restart your art business, if you're trying to just get started yourself right now, if you're just overwhelmed and you're just like, I just need to make some sense of all this and kind of get a grid for what God's calling me to do, this is the perfect opportunity for that, all right? Now, Cherie is on uh, right now, and um, she's going to share a link. Um, I'm going to actually show you this link if I can get... Um, let me see here. I got to get my screen going. When you click this link, um, it's actually going to take you to a web page where you can hear a little video from me that tells you a little bit more about the day. Um, it's going to talk about what we're going to be doing exactly. Um, you'll have a list there. After participating in the workshop, here are the things that you're going to be able to do. All right. These are the things that we're going to be working on. Um, there are two different tickets for this. There's a workshop only ticket. There's also the all access, which actually two thirds of people are buying right now. Um, it's not only the workshop, but it's also the recordings uh, and a live Q and A with me on Zoom uh, in a group right after the day um, is over. All right. So you can see all the details. You can also see right here, you're going to get the success blueprint that I was just talking, I was just showing you here. You're going to get the starter kit, which is a 26 page PDF. You're also going to get my sell your art and make money quick PDF, which is 60 plus ideas of things that are working right now for you to be able to start selling your art, both online and offline. All right. Um, all of that comes instantly when you um, when you get downloaded um, and, you know, all that. There's also down at the bottom, you can see some frequently asked questions and, uh, and all that. But uh, go to the link that Cherie is sharing uh, right now inside um, the program, and you can see, um, or inside the uh, 
uh, the Facebook uh, chat right now. And you can click on that, see all the details. You can get uh, registered right now. And uh, then what that's going to do is drop you into, you'll have to, uh, you'll get the address to go to the private Facebook group where this is going to be. All right. There's already tons of artists in there from all over the world that are sharing their art, getting to know each other. They're all at the same stage of their business, either just starting out or wanting to restart their business. And so it's, it's going to be a great, great week. If I was you, I'd do it now. That way you could get to know everybody before Jumpstart happens um, on Friday. It's going to be a, a great time. So with that, guys, I wanted to um, give you an opportunity to ask just a, a, a few questions. If you've got a question about anything that I've shared uh, tonight, I'd be glad to answer three or four questions uh, before we go. Um, you know, one of the things that the Lord showed me, I guess, I don't know, it's been a few months ago. He just kind of dropped this into my spirit, but it was, he said, every purpose needs a pathway. Every purpose needs a pathway. And that's what I think about with Jumpstart. And that's what I think about with our mentoring program and the courses that we do and that sort of thing. My job and our job, you know, in, in what we do as a team is to point you to Jesus, <laughs> unco help you to uncover through the power of the Holy Spirit, who you are and who he's called you to be, and then give you the practical tools you need to start stepping out in your calling as an artist. No matter if you're retired and you're just wanting to make some extra income, no matter if you're a single mom and you're like, I need to make this work to make ends meet, or if you're wanting to go into doing this part-time, full-time, um, a serious side hustle, whatever it is, our job is to help you be the person that God's created you to be. And um, and that's our heart. So now Tracy Joe's got a question. How similar or different is this from the experience course? Listen, this could not be more different. That's a great question. The experience course is seven weeks. First of all, it is this much about business. All right. Uh, and this much about your heart and mind and all that sort of thing. Jumpstart is super duper duper practical. It is all I would say 80% focus on business, branding, marketing, finding clients, social media, um, developing your brand, that sort of stuff. We're definitely going to touch on heart and mind uh, as a foundation but it is and, and developing a vision for your life, but it is um, not at all like the focus um, of it. This is a practical get your butt in gear, get your business started, get off the ground, get going kind of um, kind of thing. That's what we call it, jumpstart. So um, let's see here. Deborah says, explain access to all the videos. Are they the ones on your website? No, so um, the videos that I'm talking about are the videos from Jumpstart, all right? So we're going to record. There are going to be four 90-minute sessions in that one day inside the Facebook group, all right? We're going to record those. After the thing is over, we're going to put them on a website and give you a login so you can log in and watch those. You'll have uh, access to those. Uh, as long as we're a company, you got access to them. And so um, that's what you get when you are um, when you uh, get the all access ticket. So Sonia says, is this relevant for me right now if I'm just trying to learn my craft? Absolutely. I say this all the time and I, I say this to you, Sonia. It is so much easier to start by laying a solid foundation than it is to get way down the road trying to do things yourself, trying to figure it out yourself, trying to go on YouTube and watch free videos and get all that. Just get a plan. Get started with a solid foundation first as you're developing uh, what it is that you do creatively, and uh, you'll be in good, good, good shape. So. Yeah, Kristen, any particular advice how to get clarification um, on the vision from the Lord? Well, that's one of the things we're going to be talking about in Jumpstart. <laughs> I'll just say this just, just as a little, a little teaser. One of the things I think that causes people not to have clarification is not the lack of God speaking, but it is your willingness to trust what he's saying and how he's communicating it to you. And we're going to be talking about that because learning to have confidence in God's voice and confidence in your ability to hear and not judging first 
but just listening openly is a really, really, really big uh, key that when you learn that, you can, it really can set you free. So, Linda says, is this designed for people who are not members of the mentoring program or is it additional supplemental to the mentoring program? Well, Linda, it's really designed for people who are not in the mentoring program because inside the mentoring program, people already have all of this and a hundred times more. Um, you know, our mentoring program is uh, 250 plus videos. It takes at least 12 to 18 months to go through. It's in the context of community. It's the marathon. All right. Jumpstart is the sprint. It's the help me get focused, help me get out of the gate, help me get on the journey quick, all right, and going in the right direction um, with a solid foundation. So it's uh, really, really designed for the people who are not in the mentoring program yet. So although I'm sure a lot of people will join the mentoring program after doing Jumpstart just because it's a, the next kind of natural step um, on the journey. So Sonia says the experience course sounds, uh, and then she also says the experience course sounds more appropriate for me. How can I get started? Well, the experience course is only open once a year. All right, that opens in April. Um, what ha, what I would encourage you to do, Sonia, honestly, come in to jumpstart. All right, get a solid foundation, get to know me a little more, that sort of thing. No obligation. You're with me for a day. You may say, I love this guy. You may say, this guy's a quack, whatever. You, <laughs> I hope you won't say that. But it's a great opportunity to, to get to know the feel of what we do. All right. In September, we open the doors to the mentoring program. I'd encourage you to come into the mentoring program because once you do that, a lot of the teaching that's in the experience course is the foundational material for the, for the, the mentoring program. And then once we open up the experience course in April, we always have at least a third of the participants um, in the mentoring in the experience course. We had almost 500 go through that this year. At least a third of them were members of the mentoring program already. So that's what I'd encourage you to do, um, you know, just because of the time frame and, um, and that sort of thing. So, all right. But that's a that's a great, great option. Um, da, 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 da. Tracy Ann says, what if we ask questions for Jumpstart and we can't be on live due to different countries? Um, will those be answered? Well, Tracy Ann, here's the beautiful thing about this. Number one, you got a Facebook group all this week. All right. So you can ask questions in there now. Uh, if you are on the live with me um, on uh, at the end of the call that night, um, I'm doing a live Q&A. All right. Um, for the people that get the all access ticket. All right. We're going to leave the Facebook group open for a few days after um, the jumpstart just to help get every all the information to everybody and make sure everybody's got what they need. Um, so if you got a question, again, our heart is to get that answered and and make sure you get what you what you need. All right. Um, Kim Penny says, can I do jumpstart later? She's um, she's actually at Eagle Rock Creative Retreat with uh, Amanda Galuli. Yay! I'm actually planning to speak at that on Saturday. All right, that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I love Amanda and her husband and what they're doing there at, at Eagle Rock. But um, yeah, you can absolutely get the all access ticket. That way, if you can't be there live on Friday, you can get access to the recordings. That's the only way to get the recordings. All right. Um, let's see here. Chris Perry says, how much is the mentoring program? That's a great question. That opens in September. So um, we'll be doing a, a five-day master class telling you all about all about that called Artist Rise Up. Um, so be sure to register for that. But the mentoring program is $97 a month or $9.97 for the year. That's a better deal because you get too much free or, uh, or just about too much free. Or we have a lifetime option, which is uh, $24.97. And you pay once, you never pay again. As long as we got the mentoring program, you're in forever. All right. So we have people do all different levels, um, whatever works for you. But it's um, we try to make it as affordable and easy to access as, as possible. So um, da -da 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 -da. Rachel says, over the years of being a professional visual artist, I've experienced the rejection of many church people and not accepted as a prof art professional. How do you respond to this? 
Well, Rachel, I've actually got a podcast episode exactly on that. <laughs> and uh, if Cherie, if you would go that, grab that podcast episode, Cherie, um, it's something about help my church doesn't get me or something like that. I actually walked through a whole teaching about that that very subject. If you're not listening to the men- to the podcast, guys, I want to encourage you listen to the podcast. Uh, we just passed, if you can believe this, we just passed over half a million downloads. <laughs> I know. Our team was like, what the what? 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 Are you kidding me? Half a, think of that. Half a million downloads over the last two and a little bit over two years uh, since we started the podcast. It has been an amazing journey. It's absolutely free. You can get it on whatever app you listen to podcasts on. And um, I think we're up to, I don't know, maybe 100 and, 170 something uh, episodes on the podcast, but definitely, definitely grab it. So, and uh, thank you. Thank you, Deborah. She said, podcasts are awesome. I love it. And uh, D says, I love the podcast. I listen to them all. Well, thank you, D. I appreciate that. Betty Spring says, will you offer Jumpstart again? No, we're not offering it again this year. We're not offering it again this year. We're going to offer it in again, coming up Friday. So you got to make a quick decision about this. We've been talking about it for a month or so. But Friday's, you know, actually Thursday night, you got to make a decision by Thursday night. Come into Jumpstart. It's a day long. Again, it's a day. It's six hours. All right. Clear your calendar. Do it. Again, if you can't do that, but you want to participate, uh, jump in the Facebook group and then just get the all access ticket. All right. And that way you get the recordings. So you'll have all the recordings of all the material, plus all the downloads, all that kind of stuff. After that, though, we turn our attention, all right, as a company and as a community to bringing in new members into the mentoring program. All right. All September, we're talking about that. We're welcoming new members into the program. And then all during the fall, that's what we're focused on is helping our new members get settled and get started on their journey. We take that very seriously. And um, we have an incredible track record of success. In fact, our retention rate is about 95%, which is <laughs> incredible. That means 95% of the people that sign up stay with the program over the long term. That's, I mean, that's, that's pretty doggone incredible. So um, thanks, Cherie, for, uh, for sharing that, um, that episode. So love it. All righty. Let's see here. Um, Here's Andre. Andre says, any thought on why it's so much more difficult to monetize our art as musicians and composers of original music than most other art forms? People will pay 25 to 150 for visual art, but not 999 for an instrumental music album. It's disheartening. People ask to use it for free on their projects, but won't buy. Well, I think Andre, there's a couple of things going on with that. Number one, you know, I'm going to say this mindset, you know, Having a mind, having a mindset that nobody buys my stuff, it's hard. It's you know all that. If that is the pervasive thoughts that are going through your mind, then whatever you're looking for, you will find. Trust me. All right. So I would say number one, you got to kick that to the curb and cultivate a new mindset about what's possible. All right. Number two, I would say this: you're in an industry where there is a huge, huge amount of competition. Music has become a commodity. All right. There's royalty free music. There's just free music. There's uh, nobody wants to pay for music. There's streaming. I mean, all this kind of stuff. So what does that do? Because of the pervasiveness of it, it it presses the price way, way down. So what have you got to do to combat that? You've got to push your uniqueness and your connection with people way, way up because it's no longer about the music. All right. It's about the brand. It's about who you are. It's about the experience of what you're giving your audience. All right. That is really, really huge. And that's one of the big things that I teach when I teach marketing all the time is differentiating yourself because your ability to make money in the marketplace is based on how unique it is that you, what you do, all right? And the difficulty to replace you, all right? 
the uniqueness of what you do and the difficulty to, uh, to replace you. All right. It, you think about a, um, you think about the best neurosurgeon in the world. All right. Unique. You better believe it. <laughs> difficulty to replace. Very, very difficult to replace all those years of experience, all that knowledge, all that sort of thing. Guess what? Super high salary. All right. You think about pop stars, baseball players, uh, all these kind of thing. Unique in their talent. Yes. Difficulty to replace. Yes. All right. Demand is the other thing. Demand for that service in the marketplace. Again, another big differentiating factor. So, and then the supply, if the supply is, if the demand is great and the supply is great, then the price goes down. If the demand is great and the supply is low, then the price goes up, all right? That's been the beautiful thing about the way I teach art sales to people. And I've done this again my whole life with in, in what I do. I've created a niche for myself there are a lot of basket makers out there. There are a lot of uh, fiber artists out there, but I've, with those skills, I've called off a, a little corner for myself. That's a very, very, very unique marketplace. Nobody else does what I do, all right? I've created the demand through relationship, all right? And then uh, that has allowed me to charge a much higher price because there's no competition, all right? I could talk about this forever, but that's a, the short answer to, um, you know, to your, to your question there. So, all right. One more question. One more question. Um, let's see here. Suki says, is there a market for worship driven Christian visual art? Sure. Sure. There is. I mean, absolutely. You can absolutely uh, de develop a niche, uh, a niche in worship-driven Christian visual art. All right, now I will say this, I will say this, the church and most church people all over the world do not have, there's not been a culture developed of art buying. There's been a culture of art giving. You should give this to us. You know, Andre's probably shaking his head. Yeah, I feel that in the church. All right, there's not a culture in that. So again, I think what I would say, Suki, with that is, is here's the thing. You may need to, maybe you started, that's where you started. Maybe that's where you've come back to, um, you know, your uh, creativity. Maybe that's where God's inspired you is in the context of worship and creativity and that sort of thing. But I'm telling you, and I've just seen this over and over and over again, artists who look to the church uh, to be their primary source of sales are almost always greatly disappointed. But artists who will serve their church, develop community, be inspired by who, who God's called them to be and go into the marketplace, all right, with what they're called to do, almost always are able to, to function in a beautiful way in the marketplace when they know the practical tools. And that's what we're talking about um, at Jumpstart. All right. So I've just seen it um, over and over and over again. Does it mean you can't sell prophetic art? Sure you can. You can. I'm just telling you the artists that I know that are like show enough, really selling art. Um, they have, they have, have, are not looking at the church all right, and church culture as a primary source of sales. All right, that's just being dead level honest with you. All right. Well, guys, I love you so much. I'm so glad that you're on tonight. It's been a great time. I hope, listen, I hope every one of you will sign up for Jumpstart. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be just like this. I'm going to be here, except I'm going to be over um, in the other part of my studio standing up. I got a whiteboard over there. Um, it's going to be wonderful. We're going to have a great day together. You're going to come out with practical information, but you're also going to come out with a practical to-do list. You're going to be working. I'm going to teach, then I'm going to shut up, and you're going to work, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to look at it as a community, and then I'm going to keep going, and you're going to have some really practical 
uh, things that, that you're going to come out with at the end of this. All right. I love you very much. Father, thank you in Jesus name, Lord, that you are raising up an army of artists to reveal your glory in the earth. Lord, for the ones that are willing, uh, Lord, would you draw the people that you want to be a jumpstart? Lord, if there's a yes in people's heart, Holy Spirit, I pray that you draw them uh, to be a part of this so that they can be equipped and encouraged uh, in the next steps that you have for them in being a thriving artist in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Hey, have a great, great rest of your evening, rest, rest of your day, whenever you're watching this. Be sure to hit the share button. Let other folks know that this has been a blessing to you. And I really, really hope that we see you at Jumpstart on Friday, August the 14th. But you got to register right now. All right. See you soon. Bye.